I am taking this Ford Mustang GT convertible and I'm gonna flip it. So now that we have the new bumper in, we're gonna let it sit in the sun and hopefully unmold itself. You really outdid yourself on this one. YouTube world my name is Craig from flying wheels welcome to my flying wheels YouTube channel have you ever seen people wholesale cars what is wholesaling cars wholesaling cars means you sell dealer to dealer it's a completely different dealers license and it's actually a much easier license to get it's a lot less expensive it's a lot less insurance but there are a lot of things you can't do like sell to the public and make some serious cash well just recently I posted a video of a Dodge Ram where I made almost $4,500 wholesaling the car. I bought it at the auction, took it back, cleaned it, fixed it, sold it back at the auction, and made $4,500, which is amazing. I bought myself a 2017 Ram 2500 Laramie Longhorn Mega Cab Cummins. I'm a little jealous. 70,000 miles. I stole this thing. Four days later, and the Ram is complete. There she is. Mad. So Ram, let's see what it does. I got a call from the auction. They ended up selling it after the auction to somebody that was interested for 44 G's. So it is gone. I'm gonna try to do it again with this Mustang. Once again, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. Here's the Mustang running through today. That car looks damn good and hopefully it brings some nice money today. All right, here comes the Mustang. Let's see how it does. That's not good. That's not good. That should be a $4,500 car with no problems. What the heck? Week two, at dealer auction. Absolutely the worst day to be selling a convertible. It is pouring with flood watches, monsoon watches. And I mean, the only day worse than this would be a freaking snow day. So I don't anticipate much happening in a positive light here with the Mustang. Now, there is more to it than that. Being a used car dealer, I don't get a good number either. So I'm not early in the day. My number is like E134, meaning 134 cars have to run through before mine. So that's also a bummer because nobody stays till the end of the day because that's when I don't know. It, all the good stuff runs in the morning, so nothing runs in the afternoon. So I don't have even a good number, and it's a rainy day. So it looks like I'm anticipating having to do this again next week, and I have to pay a run fee every single week. Four hours later, my car is literally the last one running through, even though I asked for a number a week ago. So there's nobody even at the auction anymore. So I'm not gonna get anything. Today was a freaking waste of a day. There she is, week two in all of her glory. Top down, looking fly but there's nobody here to bid on it. So mine gets put behind the junk. That truck doesn't run. This car is literally getting pushed out and then my car comes up. So junk, junk. What do you expect this one to be now? All right guys, listen to me. She's number 134. It's an 03 model. It has a GT rag with a pony package. Welcome around the movie time. It's automatic. We're top work. You got me. Rick, the top work. The top works. The top was just up. Okay, guys, you got the announcement? Money. All right, guys, we're all good. It's just still GT. She's a 4 or 6 GT. Money. Okay, I'm at you. 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 Okay, i Surprisingly, there actually is some action around. There's people walking around. Yeah, 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 Appreciate it. Three eight brothers, but that won't buy. He wants four grand. Put it up to thirty seven hundred. Thirty eight hundred. It looks like it's in one piece. The runs good. Yeah. And it runs good, right? And he said it runs good. All right, send me a message. Get for 
finished. Thanks Thank anyway. You. Here we go. There she is way over there coming through the lanes. Auction's a little busier today and it's a beautiful day. So hopefully we can get rid of this thing and make some money. But at three weeks in, I'm not feeling too promising about it. Such a good looking car though. Yeah. High bids at 1600 right now. I am gonna lose my shirt on this thing. $1,700. It's ridiculous. F word. I can't swear on YouTube. I don't like to. So that sucks though. And it really bums me out. I don't even, I'm gonna have to retail that thing and I don't even want to. So I'm gonna sell it as a project to somebody because it still needs tires, it still needs some work. That's just a real bummer. I thought I could just turn it quickly. Goes to show you, wholesale is not that easy. So that's a perfect example. If anybody's looking to get into wholesale, it's not as easy as it looks. You can't just buy something and sell it for a profit. There's a lot that goes into it and you still might not make a profit. Well, three weeks in a row, total bust. Obviously, I am not fit for wholesaling cars at this auction. It doesn't work for me. I have wholesale cars and I do wholesale cars at other auctions, thank you ACV, that I do really, really well on, not the Mustang. So the Mustang is gonna have to go back to the shop now. I'm gonna have to do tires. I'm gonna have to go through it a little more thoroughly to make it retail ready. And I'm gonna sell it on the retail market and I'll probably list it for 6,500. So I'll get back to you in part two to update you on what we've sold it for. But this is a perfect example for all the people that are thinking that wholesaling is so simple. You can't just buy a car and then sell it at auction and make money. It's not that easy, there's a lot to it, and sometimes you don't make money at all, clearly. So I am at the tire shop with that Mustang because it is an absolute fail at the auction. I am not getting, three weeks in a row, even close to what I paid for it before I did the repairs, which is mind blowing to me. I thought I was gonna make a killing on this thing. So now I have to retail it. To retail it, it needs some rubber because these wheels were on my drift car for a long time and you can see the edges are just completely dry rotted. We need to get some new rubber. I wonder if they'll let me do some burnouts here before I take those tires off. used car dealer I showed up with an empty tank of gas. Let's see what happens now. Prime the pump a couple times. On, off, on, off, and we're good. Next day. Alright, off to the tire shop to pick up the Mustang. And I'm really curious to see if new tires make all the difference in the rideability because I'm pretty sure that had a broken belt from my drift tires. I wanna show you how much a full wheel alignment and a new set of tires makes a difference on your car. This Mustang, you can see driving straight. Now, no hands on the steering wheel, how much it turns. Well, the tires are completely bald on it and they're way out of balance. So we're gonna take it to get four new tires and a full wheel alignment just to show you how much of a difference tires and an alignment actually make on a car. And after four new tires and a four wheel alignment. Hey, little fun fact about pumping gas that not everybody knows about. So most cars have an arrow pointing to which side the gas door is on. This one doesn't, but if you notice, the nozzle is on the passenger side of the gas pump. So, let's check to make sure that's true. And it is on the passenger side of the car. You're welcome. So the Mustang is done. I gotta say, four new tires and a four wheel alignment. The tires obviously had a broken belt. Those are my drift wheels. The thing drives beautifully now. It's still kind of a dog. I'm, yeah, I'm not really that impressed. So we're about to go take some photos of it. I can't take the loss at the auction. So what I was going for, moving some metal, a quick flip, wasn't ideal in this car. If I was taking losses, I'd be out of business. So we did a little bit more work to it to try to perfect the car as much as it could really be perfected. And we're gonna list it for sale for $59.95, which is actually far below book value. Holy shoot, the hood is up a little bit and I'm on the highway. Guys always pop the hood and they never shut it all the way. This scares the heck out of me. I don't know why it's so hard to shut a hood. There we go. I noticed the hood start blowing up and down 
which is terrifying if that's ever happened to you. It's happened to me too many times. So, anyway, I'm gonna list it for $59.95 on my website, which makes a pretty good profit, and that's really well below book value, so I should sell it pretty quickly at $59.95, which will give me about a $2,000 profit on a quick flip, and I wanna get rid of this thing before fall comes. I mean, it's September already, so we gotta really start moving some stuff. So let's go take some photos of it and start marketing the sale. does look good at night. That bumper went went on nicely. That quarter came out nice. The spoiler did as well. I'm pumped about this car. How do the fog lights turn on? Do they work? Do the fog lights work? Let's see. No fogs. Now, last video, I had talked about the 69 Mustang that I had in high school. That was one of my first cars. Junior year, my father had a 72 Mustang Mach 1, red with black stripes. It was awesome. He let me take it to junior prom. It was a blast. It was like the coolest kid to myself, at least, I thought, because I got to drive a 72 Mach 1 around. Well, four years ago, I took in this 73 Mustang Mach 1 four-speed Cobra Jet 351. This is an R code. This is actually a really rare car because it's a Cobra Jet V8, even though it's a 351, and it's in a four-speed. There's that walnut steering wheel again. So you can see I do have a passion for Mustangs. The only problem is I hate restoring old cars. So this one has been sitting here for four years. If you go way back into the archives, you can see the video of me buying this car and how we got it to this far. So hopefully, I mean, they've been saying it a long time. Hopefully we get this thing done really soon. And if you saw this in last week's Mustang video, part two, what about this car? This could be fun. Nice set of Z wheels. Is it a standard? Oh, look at the wheels are in the car or just one wheel in the car. All right, so we have two wheels here. We have one wheel in there. There a third in the trunk. No, so we have three wheels. We saw this at the auction and I thought about putting those wheels on my Nissan Skyline, but the car is missing one wheel for some reason. There's only three wheels on it. So luckily we have a set of G35 wheels which are the same exact bolt pattern, pretty much the same exact car that we're gonna put on this car, make it look stock. Stock always sells. I always like stock, it appeals to everybody. So this will actually be a pretty neat car when we're done. So here's the before. Next day, we get the G35 wheels on, the top is down. German has already figured out how to make this thing look amazing. Watch this. German, you got a lot of credit on the Mustang part two video, by the way making that thing as clean as it was. Now here is the 350Z original headlight. Here is what German has done after. You mind taking a second to explain what you did? Well, this one was really easy. I just did um, ultra cut compound. They didn't even have to wet sand. It was just from like this car sat a lot. So it was just mostly dirt and some oxidation, but it was Pretty soon. It looks amazing. This car is going to be night and day when you're done with it. It's going to be my car. getting her wash and then it's gonna be a complete transformation so I'm really pumped about this it was a diamond in the rough meanwhile while we're chatting about it that Challenger RT right there customer YouTube actually a viewer YouTube viewer wants to sell us this car and it is a six-speed 2014 130,000 miles six-speed Hemi RT what are these things worth because, and it's pearl, even though you can't tell it. What are those worth? Because he has a payoff amount, and I gave him an offer lower than his payoff amount because based on book, but there is a high value on these things right now. Anyway, that car's awesome. So the Mustang is clean. It has four brand new tires, mounted, balanced, four wheel alignment. Now we could fix the top, but the top is a lot of work to replace. And the seat, actually one of you guys sent me a link to seat covers that are seat cover replacements for the Ford Mustang GT seats. Super impressed, and they were super cheap. 
So I have two options. I can either fix everything, make it retail ready, and then get like 85 to nine grand, or I can discount the car and price it at like 59.95 and see who bites. Now that is cheap. And the problem is going on like Facebook Marketplace and everything, it doesn't matter what the price is, you're still gonna get 50% offers. So if I ask 10, I'll get 5K cash today offers. If I ask eight, I'll get four. If I ask six, I'll get three. It's the same headache over and over and over all day long on Facebook Marketplace. It brings me a lot of business, but it's an absolute nightmare to deal with 90% of the public on Facebook Marketplace. But we're gonna list it on Facebook Marketplace for six grand, see who bites. Question for you, Mustang hasn't sold yet, You've showed it a bunch of times. What's everybody's consensus? What's everybody saying? Um, a little rough around the edges, and I tell them that um, the price reflects its overall condition. All right, are they happy, unhappy? How many times have you showed it so far? At least five, once a day at least. Okay. So my phone is blowing up. My Facebook message is blowing up because it's a really cheap Mustang. For what it is, it's cheap at six grand but I'm getting so many calls and then people are really upset because they want more than what it is. So their expectations are like way high. Tip for anybody selling anything, just be honest, just be upfront, okay? Make a video, explain the condition in the description, take photos of the imperfections, let everybody know what they're getting before they get here. Otherwise they're just gonna be upset and it's gonna be a time waste for them and for you. So we were very descriptive and people still expect way too much for an underpriced car the next day. So I showed up today from the auction. German gave me a surprise. 6K cash in hand. Mustang is gone. We got full asking price out of our hair. Customers happy? Yeah. Local guy, right? We have a local kid that just bought an auto on tech school in Manchester. So he was looking for a car. Couldn't have gone to a better person. Kid wants to work on it, knows what he's getting into. Handy. Perfect car for that. So project is over, so let's go count the numbers and see how we did now. So the Mustang is sold. It took us a grand total of like three weeks, maybe a month, because I think we ran it through the auction for three weeks. So in hindsight, I should have just sold it retail. Obviously you can make a lot more money selling retail than you can wholesale, but had I sold it in week one, I would have not had to do tires and I would have made money. So moving metal, do it quickly. That way you can move product and you can keep the turnover going and you constantly make money Less money, but over time. You make a million dollars over time, not every time, remember that. So just move the metal, let it keep going. But because it didn't sell at auction, I'm not about to take a loss on it. We brought it back here, I took it to the tire shop, I put four brand new tires on it, we spent a little more extra time, a little more extra care on the car, and we sold it retail for $6,000. Now we owned it for $2,900. I had those Mustang GT wheels, but I would have been able to sell those for at least 400, figure 100 bucks a wheel, so add 400, that's 3,300. The bumper was 150, the tail light thing was about 50, so that's another 200. Paint was 50, so I'm 250 into it. So 33 plus 250 is 3550. So I own it for about 3550 plus shop expenses, so add another 500 to that. So we own it for about four grand. German, he got six grand for it. So we made like two grand on that car before like shop expenses and overhead, so that's pretty great. Now, you see that Raptor? That's our next one. That's gonna be really, really fun. Also, remember that 21 Jeep Wrangler that I had? I had that car for eight months. You can see that it's nowhere to be found. It's not here. It's finally gone after eight months and it was an absolute nightmare to own. I'm gonna tell you how much money it cost me to fix my 21 Jeep Wrangler with 185 miles and how much money we made on it at the end of it. And that's gonna be like, so that should be somewhat interesting as well. Also, startyourdealership.com, carflipping101.com, either of those. I'm gonna teach you every single detail. I will take your hand, not literally, and walk you through the process. There is so much more involved than what I show you on YouTube, so make sure to check out carflipping101.com if you wanna learn how to flip cars for real, or startyourdealership.com if you really wanna mentor and learn how to start your own dealership, get your own dealer's license, get into the auctions. I'm super excited about this. I'm like two to three weeks away from the release, so make sure to check those websites out. There's like links down below if you wanna check them out. Last thing, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Make sure you hit the bell to get notifications every time we make a new video. And you know, a thumbs up is always helpful because I spend a lot of time on these videos. A thumbs up helps boost the algorithm so more people get to see it. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Adios.